the Bayou's Horrifying Secret, Part 3. The night weighed heavy on us as Ash and I made our way to the pier on the bayou. The clock on the car's dashboard read 11.45, and our headlights cut through a thick mist that seemed to rise from the very soul of the swamp. The car came to a stop on a gravelly patch near the entrance to the pier, and the engine's dying hum seemed to resonate with the very air around us. The place was alive with the sounds of unseen creatures croaking and clicking in the darkness, while the pale moonlight barely penetrated the thick canopy of twisted trees. The moss-draped landscape seemed familiar, but I couldn't place it. Ash glanced over, noticing my discomfort. You all right? He asked. Yeah, I replied, my voice distant. It's just that I feel like I've seen this place before. I reached for Gabby's leather-bound journal filled with her meticulous sketches. I suspected her drawings were more than art. They were a visual roadmap, a guide to her thoughts and experiences. As I flipped through the pages, my heart began to pound. There it was, a sketch that matched the pier perfectly, down to the very gnarls in the wood. Ash, look at this, I said, showing him the sketch. His eyes widened and he reached for the notebook, his fingers lingering on the page. It's exactly the same, he muttered. I looked at my watch and saw that it was a couple minutes before midnight. We stepped out of the car, every instinct screaming at me that something wasn't right. The bayou was ancient and untouched, and it held secrets I wasn't sure I wanted to know. The path to the pier was overgrown and slick with moss, our footsteps muted by the damp earth. The creaking of the wooden pier under our weight seemed to echo into eternity, and I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. My skin prickled with the sensation of unseen eyes following our every move. The mist swirled and danced around us, and for a split second in the distance, I thought I saw something. A figure twisted and grotesque. It loomed over the marsh, a shadow within shadows, gone as quickly as it appeared. I stumbled, a cold chill raising down my spine, my breath catching in my throat. Ash, I whispered, my voice cracking. He turned, concern in his eyes. What's wrong? Did you see that? I asked, my eyes wide, scanning the darkness where the figure had been. See what? He asked, following my gaze, his hand resting on the gun at his side. I... I'm not sure. My words felt hollow when the terror was replaced with a gnawing doubt. Before I could think further, the sound of footsteps reached our ears. They were soft but deliberate, coming closer, breaking through the eerie silence of the night. We turned, weapons drawn, only to find Lucien emerging from the shadows, his face pale and drawn. His eyes held a haunted look, and his hands trembled as he approached. Lucian, I snapped, holstering my pistol. What the hell? You could have gotten yourself shot. I didn't think you'd actually come, he stammered, surprise and relief in his voice. Of course we came, Ash replied, his tone more measured. You said you know something about Gabby. Okay, can we talk in the car? Lucien's eyes darted around the swamp, his voice trembling. I don't want to be overheard. In the car, I scoffed, though the prickle on my skin told me he might be onto something. Who's going to overhear us here? Please, he begged, his face pale. I don't know who or what, but something doesn't feel right. I think we're being watched. The words hung in the air, echoing my own uneasy feelings. Reluctantly, I nodded. Fine, come on. We scrambled into the car and the doors shut with a reassuring thud, though the sense of unease lingered. Once inside, I could see Lucien's fear was genuine and it matched the uneasy feeling I'd been experiencing. I tried to be patient, but my mind was racing. Okay, Lucien, spill it. What's going on? He looked out the window, his eyes lost in the darkness. Gabby and I, we've been seeing each other. Seeing each other? I pressed not satisfied with his vague answer. What does that mean? Were you dating? Yeah, dating, Lucien admitted, his voice barely above a whisper. Dating, and more than that. But we didn't tell her mom. Didn't tell anyone, really. And why is that? I asked, my patience wearing thin. The suspense was getting to me, and Lucien's reluctance to divulge was driving me crazy. I... 
Lucien started, tears welling in his eyes. I just can't. Ash, ever the empath, reached over and placed a reassuring hand on Lucien's shoulder. It's okay, bud, he said gently. We're here to help. We need to understand everything to find Gabby. You can trust us. I caught the meaningful look Ash shot my way and realized I needed to dial back my frustration. With a deep breath, I forced a smile and tried to soften my voice. Lucian, we know this is hard for you, but we need to know what happened so we can help. Please just tell us everything. Lucian looked between Ash and me, his fear giving way to a hesitant trust. His voice broke as he began to speak. We didn't tell her mom because... Because we were having sex. We were in love, but her mom would never understand. I felt my eyebrows shoot up, surprised by the admission, but still sensing there was more to the story. Lucien looked as though he were about to be sick. And then I pressed, trying to keep my voice gentle but firm. And then Gabby told me she was pregnant, Lucien said, the words coming out in a rush. The car went silent. The words hung in the air like a bombshell, and I felt the weight of them settle over us. Pregnant. That changed everything. Pregnant, Ash finally said, breaking the silence. Are you sure? Yeah, Lucien whispered. She showed me the pregnancy test. She was scared and didn't know what to do. We didn't know what to do. The pieces of the puzzle were beginning to come together and a chilling picture was forming. A young girl pregnant, her future uncertain, her mother likely to react with anger and disappointment. I wanted to yell at Lucien and scold him for his reckless behavior, but felt a sudden pang of sympathy for him. He was just a kid, thrown into an impossible situation, and now the girl he loved was missing. I forced myself to push aside my impatience and spoke to him with genuine compassion. I know this is hard, I said softly, but we need to know everything. Did Gabby say anything else? Did she have any plans? Did she talk to anyone else about the pregnancy? Lucien wiped his tears with the back of his hand, struggling to get the words out. I... I wanted to keep the baby, he confessed, his voice filled with regret and pain. I thought we could make it work, but Gabby... Gabby didn't see it that way. My heart ached for the young man, who was clearly torn by the memory. I shared a glance with Ash, who gave a subtle nod, encouraging me to press on. What do you mean, Cher? I asked gently, keeping my voice calm. What did Gabby want? She wanted an abortion, he finally whispered, the words barely escaping his lips. She was so scared and she felt like we had no other choice, but she didn't know how. A heavy silence filled the car, the weight of Lucien's revelation settling over us, the implications were enormous. In rural Louisiana, access to abortion was nearly impossible. Strict laws combined with social stigma made it a daunting challenge for anyone, let alone a frightened young girl. Did she tell anyone else? I asked, my mind racing with the possibilities. Lucien shook his head. No, not at first. We kept it between us, but then... Then something happened. What? Ash asked, his voice sharp sensing that we were getting closer to something significant. There was this stranger, Lucien continued, his voice trembling. He came to the bar a couple weeks before Gabby disappeared. An out-of-towner, but he seemed familiar with the region and spoke fluent French. Well-dressed, tipped well. But there was something about him. What do you mean? I asked, feeling a chill creep up my spine. Lucien's face grew more animated as he recalled the mysterious stranger, the fear in his eyes replaced by something akin to fascination. He had this, I don't know how to describe it, this animal magnetism. He just had a way about him. He could charm anyone, really. But with Gabby, it was different. It was like he had her under a spell. Lucien hesitated for a moment, then continued. He liked her fiddling sat there all night listening to her play. But the way he looked at her, it was like he could see right through her. He told her he could help her with her situation. I shared a quick glance with Ash, who looked equally alarmed. Did you hear anything else? Did this stranger give a name? I asked, hoping for more clues. 
Lucian frowned, deep in thought. I couldn't pick up much else, but he did mention a name. He finally said, Lupin. Lupin? Asher echoed. It's French for wolf-like, I explained, biting my lip. It must be an alias, Ash suggested. Why didn't Remy mention a Lupin when we spoke? I asked. His son was sick and wasn't working that day, Lucian responded. Did you talk to Gabby about this Lupin? I asked, keeping my gaze fixed on Lucian. Lucian's face went ashen, and he shook his head. I tried to ask her, but she shut me down. She just said that she was taking care of it, that it was something she had to do on her own. She wouldn't tell me anything else. The silence in the car was heavy, the revelation hanging over us like a shadow. I had more questions than answers. What had Lupin really wanted? What had Gabby agreed to? Do you remember what he looked like? I asked, pulling out my notepad to take down his description. He was tall, maybe around six feet and had long, dark, shaggy hair. He had a beard, too, and his eyes. His eyes were the color of the swamp, an unreal green, Lucien recalled, his voice barely above a whisper. I jotted down Lucien's description. My mind was already full of the implications of what he'd told us. The mention of the mysterious stranger started to make everything click into place. Gabby's odd behavior in the weeks leading up to her disappearance, her deleting her search history, the money she had stashed away, the unnerving sketch of something growing inside of her. It was all beginning to form a clear but disturbing picture. Once we finished our questioning, we gave Lucien a ride home. His house was small and modest, located on the outskirts of town. It was clear that his family didn't have much, but the home was well taken care of. As we pulled up to his house, Lucien leaned forward in the back seat. I want to help find Gabby. Please, let me help. He pleaded, his eyes brimming with determination. I appreciated his sentiment, but it was clear that he was in over his head. You've already helped a lot, I assured him, handing him my card. We'll handle it from here. If you think of anything else, don't hesitate to call. Lucien pursed his lip, nervously fidgeting in his seat. Are you going to tell Gabby's mamo? He asked timidly. I sighed. As much as I wanted to protect him from the fallout, we had a duty to the truth. Yes, Lucien, we have to, I replied, trying to keep my tone gentle. She has the right to know. He nodded, looking out at his small, humble home. The dim porch light illuminated the weary sadness on his face. I understand, he said quietly. But listen, I told him, meeting his gaze. We're going to do everything we can to find Gabby and you have my word that we'll keep you updated if anything comes up. A small, grateful smile creeped onto his face. Thanks, sir, he said, his voice filled with sincerity. For everything. I nodded in acknowledgement, watching as Lucien got out of the car and walked towards his home. I watched him disappear into the dim light, his silhouette merging with the shadows. A sense of foreboding hung heavy in the air. My mind couldn't help but wander into dark territory. The prospect of a kidnapping or even human trafficking reared its ugly head, casting a chilling shadow over the unfolding mystery. Whoever Lupin was, he was now our prime suspect. I looked out the window, my eyes drawn to the shadowy swamp, a place filled with secrets and mysteries. The bayou had seen much over the years, and it felt as though it were watching us now waiting to see what we would do next. To be continued in part four.